What's going on again? It's Eddie Martinez here with the Recording Connection and welcome to your supplemental video for lesson number six, Intro to the Console. Let's go ahead and jump right to it. Okay guys, so we're about to cover three topics in this video, so let's go ahead and remember to take plenty of notes. Let's start by titling your notes at the top of your page, Lesson 6, Video Notes. And go ahead and make sure that you have enough space for each bullet point that we're going to talk about. We're going to be covering three topics, so make sure they're all around four or five lines apart, which is good enough space for taking notes. So the first thing that we're actually going to talk about is what is a mixing console? So that'll be bullet point one. Bullet point two will be digital versus analog mixers. And then bullet point three will be virtual mixing. So let's jump right into it. So what is a mixing console? Well, mixing console goes by many names. It can kind of get confusing here. Uh, it's been known to be called an audio mixer, soundboard, mixing desk, uh, audio production console, or you know sometimes even that black box thingy with all those crazy knobs. Whatever you call it, what it really comes down to is that it's an electronic device for combining routing and changing the level and timbre or dynamics of an audio signal. A mixer can actually mix analog or digital signals depending on the type of mixer you're working with. So uh, that's pretty much what a console is or a mixing desk or whatever you want to call it. I, I know it gets a little bit confusing with all the names, but that's essentially what it is. It's just a, a unit where you can go ahead and you know, input a uh, signal and then change the dynamics of it. There's plenty more features in there like panning and, and effects, which uh, you'll get into when you meet with your mentor. Let's go ahead and cover digital mixers. Digital mixers are great. Uh, but they can usually have an amount of latency. Uh, this usually ranges from anything from 1.5 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds. It really depends on what make and model of mixer you're actually using and what features are actually engaged. So this small amount of uh, latency or, or delay doesn't really create too many problems, but sometimes it does when you are doing vocal stuff. So within a digital mixer, there can be different amount of latency depending on the routing and how much DSP or digital signal processing is in use. Some digital mixers are great and they incorporate something uh, called latency correction, which usually solves these problems. So now that you have an idea what a digital mixer is, you know, its features and benefits and advantages and disadvantages, let's go ahead and talk about analog mixers. So analog consoles actually remain pretty popular due to the ease of use. They usually have one knob, one fader, or one button per function. Uh, so, you know, this actually makes it a little bit easier for the engineer or producer to actually use. Analog consoles do take up a little bit more physical space, but they do allow more rapid response for changing uh, performance conditions. And then one more huge thing that makes analog consoles great is that it's a lot simpler to understand the hardware routing, which is very important. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and talk about virtual consoles. So virtual consoles might actually be something that you're already familiar with. You've probably seen this on your own desktop when you're running your own program at your house, either Pro Tools or Logic or whatever program that you have. Uh, it has a lot of the same functionalities and sometimes the same exact functionalities of a digital or analog mixer. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. This has been Eddie Martinez with The Recording Connection. And if you always want a little bit more, do a little Google search on Music Is My Oxygen. You'll find all the things that you love about music right there. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.